So hello everybody, how are you today? It is Monday, so it's time for another Power Query video. And in today's Power Query video, we're going to talk about errors in Power Query. So I have seen this a lot of times, and it is especially with business users that have a lot of trouble managing errors. I think this video is really, really needed. I have done a video before, but on that video, I just cover one function to check for errors, and I'm going to do the full thing in this video. So the complete guide of errors in Power Query, at least quite complete. Anyhow, this is what we're going to do. I have here a very simple data set. I have four columns and I'm going to work with them. So I have imported them from Excel and the only thing I need, I have left is, this is text, this is a decimal number and this is date. Okay, so now I have changed type. I see the column profiler. It is green everywhere, it means I have no errors. I'm going to load. Close and apply. So let's see. Oops, what happened? I have errors. Hmm. So what do you do when you are in this point? Here's the thing. It says the table contains errors too. I, I, I would love to say which row it contains errors, but we will get to that. And it says here viewers. So like, wow, cool. Let's click on that. Nothing happens. It, it does happen. Something does happen, but it, Power Query does not tell you that, or Power BI does not tell you that. And this is something that just stokes a lot of business users a lot of business users you start thinking oh did it do something somewhere what's going on well, it did but you have to go to power query to see that oh you have to go to power you know when it freezes you have to minimize and maximize so you have to go to power query to see that and here it is you remember that we had only one table now a new table shows up that shows us only the errors. It says here, query errors and when the errors were produced, 21st of August and the timestamp. Okay? So this is great. It's basically telling you a few things. What it, what it does, I'm going to show you, it gets the source, it adds an index, a row index, and then it says, okay, filter by errors. And then it says, reorder columns. And what it does is it put the index at the beginning and it says, okay, it's in row 48 and 66 that the errors are. So we can go back to a data source and go to 44, this is 48, sorry, and 66. And it, it just, you can find the errors there. Now, Power Query shows you the first thousand, I think, or 10,000 rows. So if your error is on the rows after that, you won't see it. So it is a, it is a pain. And you want to know, but it, again, you have this thing here that is basically showing you the errors. So you can just go in here. You have two choices here. You can click outside and then it will give you the error message there. You can click on the error itself and it will create a step, which it is a pain. I normally click outside so I don't have to, you know, generate step. And then delete the step because you don't want it. you don't want it. And now it's taking forever and ever. It normally doesn't take so long. What's going on, baby? Okay, so now it's given the um, the error in a step. We remove the step. Didn't want it in the beginning. Here's the thing. It, here is telling you what's going on. It says that this is a date column, and you have question mark, question mark in there, okay? And if we go to the next error, it says this is a date column and you have four question marks. So if we go in here, I'm going to show you, you can see it actually. This is the step where we change the data type and where the error occurs. So if we go up here, combine one step before that, and we go to column 48, here you, you see 
right? So that's basically what is happening. Now, now you know that you have errors. You can see here also that it generated the data profiler, generated a what you should have done in the beginning to, to warn you, like <laughs> there are errors here. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So you know that there are errors, you know where they are, you know why you have them, right? So you have a few choices depending on what the error is and what you, how you want to manage the error. You have different choices. So the first one is you can actually right click in here and you can say remove all the errors. Don't want them. Don't care. In this case, you say undo in time intelligence. If there is no date, it's not going to show either way. Get rid of them. So if you click remove errors, it will get rid of the rows. And then you see it becomes green. It says, okay, we fix it. You will be able to load. You have another choice and is to go in here and say replace. It says don't remove the row. I still want the data for whatever other reason. I'm doing analysis on subcategory and I want to know the sales even if I don't have a date, whatever. So you can do no. For example, for date, you have to put a blank, okay, to be able to keep the format as a date without errors. So you put it in blank and then you still have the sales, but that sale would not show up when you're doing time intelligence. Be careful with that. And you have a third option, which in this case is probably what you should do and is go back to the source and fill in the date. And you know, probably don't use Excel for data entry and use a a tool that where you have to put a date basically but there's another video for another day okay now we've managed the errors and okay think about this if every time you have an error you have to do this it'll take you forever and ever and ever and i find this super frustrating what i would like number one is before we go in there get rid of these query errors. You have no idea how many business user reports I've seen that has like 40 query error folders. And they're afraid to remove them because they don't know what they are. Now you know, get rid of them. You don't want them, gone. So the lead group, if you aren't sure, save a copy of your Power BI file, delete, and then you say, oh no, I deleted the wrong columns. You have a copy, so you're good to go. Or, or you know, delete, don't save, and then you're fine. So here we are, back to our single data. And we're going to remove the replace rows, and here we have them again. So what is it? Do I have to load every time I want to know what the errors are? One of the things that I would love, Power Query Team, if you're listening, is to have here, right click and say, filter errors, like show errors, show errors, like that, show errors. And it will do exactly the same that it did on the other table, but here. You know, they had a, a, a M syntax, you could actually write that. But I want to show you an easier way that writing that. But, you know, go in here and say, yes, show me errors. And it will generate that and it will leave only the errors. Until that comes, I'm going to show you another way to do it. So this is what you're going to do. You go to add column, custom column. And you go in here to try, you write try, and then you write, um, you add the column where you have errors. In this case, it's our date column. This is it. You don't need to do anything else. Now that you're here, you go in here, you pick, has error, the other one you don't need. The value is, for example, if, I'll show you on the other video, when you're doing APIs and they show you an error, more often than not, they give you a reason, like the, not enough credentials, not enough credit, not enough. And that's what the value will show you. In this case, you know, this function does not return the error itself, so you don't know. But you get here, it has an error column, and then you can say, show me only the ones that have an error. And here we have them. So basically we're replicating the other method 
without having to load going back group delete group you know all that stuff this this is just faster and now we can go again and do the same thing okay it's question marks what do i want to do and now that you know what the errors are go up here to change to add custom right click delete until end because you don't want those steps anymore now you know what you have what the problem is and once it is done you can say okay now i want to remove the errors or you can remove the errors and then go back and delete the steps whatever rocks your boat works actually so this is i think up to now, the, the best way I know for managing errors. If you know a better way, please let us know in the comment box. I read them always in YouTube too. There are gold nuggets in there. And uh, yeah, I will do another video about it if, uh, if you have a cool way to do this or a faster way. If you find the show errors button, <laughs> just let me know. Okay, I'm going to stop talking. Have a great start of the week. I'll see you again on Wednesday on another Power BI video. And until then, take care and bye-bye.